Hello, wherever you are in the world today, welcome to Beyond the Art in our series, The Stories That Carry Us. I'm your host, Craig Beaumont Flynn, a citizen of the Cherokee Nation and the Delaware Tribe of Indians. In each episode, we will discuss with various Native American artists, influencers, art leaders, and everyone in between their experiences, the communities they serve, and the translation and interpretation of the Native American art world today. Well, welcome to Beyond the Art. Today we have Callie Chunskuti. Did I say that properly? Chunskuti with the Cherokee Nation. Um, Callie, why don't you just tell us a little about you, your role, and the upcoming event in November. So I'm a cultural events uh, project manager for um, Cherokee Nation Cultural Tourism. And last year, we had our inaugural Skosticon event. So it's uh, an indigenous-themed one-day Comic Con held in Tahlequah. Uh, We feature vendor booths where artists can sell their uh, art and share it with people, panels of indigenous graphic novel, native pop culture artists, uh, actors, filmmakers, uh, authors, all that kind of stuff. And then we also do... um, viewings and screenings of uh things that people have made as well so and we all and we have a cosplay con- competition it all culminates Fantastic. in that. that's, that's the big headlining act at the at the end is our cosplay competition so what instigated and prompted the cherokee nation to actually do this event i think we had heard of a couple other events in the country some you know smaller events kind of out west people doing things like this uh, pre-pandemic so we put it on our plan for I believe Mm -hmm. 2020 and then of course we all got to take a nice two-year break from doing anything so (laughs) (laughs) so we 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 were able to uh, finally uh, organize it and and kick it off last year Um, and it went over just so well we didn't uh we were hoping for about 500 in attendance we got close to a thousand and we're expecting more this wow. year so uh yeah it just it 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 seemed to um maybe just kind of fill a, a little bit of a niche that wasn't being filled in our area for some of the more um I would say like contemporary or maybe even just kind of just the out of the box, the stuff that you don't really think of when you think of kind of your traditional Native American arts, which are obviously mm-hmm. that that's my passion. I also run two art shows. So, you know, Native American art is my thing. But we see a lot more with uh, updating technologies and a lot more um, uh, represent Native American representation in film and media and things like that, that there are all these other avenues that we're branching out into and this gives us a place to showcase all of that i mean that's pretty fantastic for your inaugural year to have 500 participants that's that's amazing congratulations we had almost, we had almost a thousand on that. we were hoping for 500 we had almost oh we wow were, yeah we we're okay to, okay yeah. so <laughs> now our goal is I, my goal is 1200 and then i'm hoping we even surpass that maybe we'll have 1500 or something well we'll grow out of the wow. ballroom at nsu and we'll have to find a bigger space so besides wanting to do this, what was the inspiration? And was there a theme that you were trying to build around? I wouldn't say one certain theme. It was just really just kind of pop culture. A lot of people do a lot of fan art and things. Um, during the pandemic, The Mandalorian came out. And I think that a lot of people, um, especially a lot of Native people, really um, embraced the Baby Yoda character, you know, before we even knew his name, uh, we all just kind of claimed him as our own. And it really brought to light a lot of the people, a lot of native people that just love, you know, sci-fi and fantasy and, um, you know, all of those different genres. And a lot of people do fan art based on that, or, uh, you know, artistic works based on our, you know, stories and myths and legends and things like that, that, um, Mm -hmm. you know, we've just really come to find that everyone across the board is just in love with. So we're all, are, are all the participants uh, registered members of a native nation? Yes. Are all they all Cherokee? Particip- uh, not all Cherokee. We're, this this uh, is one of our events that's open to anyone of a federally recognized tribe. 
So uh, we have, mm -hmm. uh, we're working with uh, a tribe called Geek, who actually, they, they did what they called Indigicon for a couple of years before the pandemic, and then right. ran uh, Indigipop X out of the First Americans Museum this year. So there's kind of travels mm -hmm. around. I'm not sure where it'll be next year. Um, and so, like, we'll have them as one of our comic vendors. We have other comic vendors coming in, uh, people that sell and trade comic books, whether they're native or not. We have native comic book artists coming in. Um, just a plethora of, of great booths. Again, Last year, we had uh, 27 booths. This year, we're hoping to have 50. We are, um, our deadline we have a we have a deadline for submissions, and so that's coming very soon. And once we get all of those together and uh, look at all of those, we will. It's kind of a we do vet or you know make sure everyone's mm -hmm. kind of on the line and and has the meets the theme that we're looking for. Um, right. And uh, I kind of lost my train of thought there. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, that's all right. So is there? Um, well, I have a few questions. Uh, is there, when you look at the participants that want to do it and submit their, uh, I guess their platform, their parameters, is there a, a guideline that you're trying to look like a variance of different types of artistry or uh, demographics and age or backgrounds? Not age, not background. Uh, we have people, last year we had, you know, people that made toys and things like that and they were maybe a little bit older uh but anyway there's we don't even actually have an age limit so we had people that came in we've got like a father and daughter team that come in they're both artists so they brought both of their work they're both digital mm -hmm. artists um and really like we just try to keep an open mind just you know anything that looks fun <laughs> Now, is this event uh, uh, free to the public? Is there a mission charge? Last year, it was free to the public. This year, we are going to have a very small admission fee uh, for the day. It's $5, uh, all, uh, except students will be free and uh, kids under 12 will be free. So, And when do you open and what time do you close on November 4th? November 4th, it will run from uh, noon to 7 p.m. Okay, fantastic. And where is it going to be held at? It's at the NSU Ballroom, Northeastern State University in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. In the, it's the second floor of the university center. They've got a big ballroom there. Fantastic. So do you think at some point when you do outgrow your space and uh, uh, <gasps> participants, will it be more than just a one-day event? We're looking at that. We're looking at growing it into a two-day event. We uh, Last year was really successful. We're this year will be even more robust with the single day. And I do mm -hmm. anticipate it becoming like a full weekend and in a larger space. Fantastic. So what does SCOSDECON mean? SCOSD What's the meaning behind that? is um, kind of a slang or colloquial term in Cherokee. It doesn't, doesn't have like a definition. It's kind of a slang Cherokee term for anything um, fun, ready to fight, kind of badass, you know, like. Anything like that. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm so not sure multi if I should have said that meaning. On the, on the podcast, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, no worries. We don't we don't edit out or have a uh, what is it called, Jesse? Where people say a certain word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, a censor button. There you go. <laughs> so, what do you do particularly? How did you get involved with this? What was your participation and uh, role in this event? I came onto the team in uh, 2021, well, late 2020, and it was already kind of an idea they were kicking around. And um, so our our mm -hmm. main planning team is myself, uh, Candice Bird Boney, and Talisha Lou Allen. So uh, it was kind of on Candice's plate, and we realized it was going to be more than just one person could just, you know, take ownership of because there are so many different things. And uh, I, I mm -hmm. took an interest, and, and so we became the team that, that, you know, kind of does the main, the big portion of the coordinating for it. We also, uh, you know, we have an amazing marketing team and everything that does, you know, like mm -hmm. at the, the marketing materials and the logo and everything came out of our Cherokee Nation marketing department and they have just knocked it out of the park for us. 
Fantastic. So where was the most, um, I guess, people traveled from that were participating since it's it a was, wide variety? It was mostly regional. Uh, we did do a survey at the end mm-hmm. and we had people come from as we had a couple people come from as far as Dallas, um, you know, anywhere within driving range. Uh, this year, I think we don't have all of our celebrity guests solidified. But they're going to be pretty good. I just have to tell you, everyone's going to be very excited when we do get to announce those. <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the the hotels don't book up for that weekend for people coming for me then even further out of town. Fantastic. So you had uh, quite a number of participants. How many uh, guests did you have attending the event last year? Did you do a head count? Uh I'm sorry, do you mean like celebrity guests or? Uh, no, people, admission, uh, admission. Oh, guests. admission. That was our, that was, we were, you know we many? were over 850. Yeah. So that's, that's how many people came. Uh, uh, we had yeah. uh, 20, 25 to 27 vendors. We had uh, over four different panels. We hosted uh, about 30 different people uh, who came and spoke. Like last year we had uh, a team of, uh, the Voices of Inagei, which is the Cherokee Nation uh, animated children's show. And so all day we screened mm-hmm. those two, uh, the two episodes of that that are out, and people were able to go into the room and just view those as they wanted to. And then we did a, a panel with uh, a lot of the people that did the voices for that. That was really fun. We did a panel with uh, Roy Boney Jr. and Lee Francis about working with Marvel, because uh, if we're if, if you follow... Native art at all. Everybody, yes. I think everybody knows, everybody knows Roy at this point. And, um, you know, he's, he's, yes. he's uh, had the wonderful opportunity to work with Marvel and do some things like that. So we're wanting to, this year, we're wanting to really bring up more of that, bring people that have been able to um, achieve some of their artistic goals in these venues and give their insights to the public and to, you know, youth that, you know, maybe aspire to do the same things. Mm-hmm. What? Who did you have a celebrity guest last year? Last year, our main like our like our autograph selfie guest was Natalie Standing Cloud from uh, yeah. Reservation Dogs, and she did a wonderful job. Yeah. We really enjoyed having her. And then we also did a, a book signing with Roy Boney. So, and he was on. <clears throat> he was actually okay. on a couple of our panels because we worked closely with uh, language programs. This year, we do have confirmed uh, with Cherokee Nation Film Office. Jennifer Lauren will be there. And then they're also going to talk about some of the work that they're doing. We have, uh, they're working on a project called The Origin of Strawberries, and it's a motion capture demo. So they're going to do a demonstration on how they do the motion capture technology in uh, our film studio and things like that. So we do have that confirmed, but we have more to come, tons more. It's going to be a busy day. You're going to want well, to be us, there from noon me. to seven, the whole day. And we are going to have food trucks. Noon to seven. <laughs> yeah, we'll have food trucks so you can spend the whole day there. You won't even have to leave campus. Uh, <clears throat> Will this be native food or just a, a variety of different types of food? Uh, I, I don't think you can have a native event without a fry bread booth, like a fry bread Indian taco booth. So we'll definitely there have one of those. I think we've got a couple Absolutely. of options that we're talking to, making sure. I don't want to put a name out there before we make sure that we book them, but we will not be Indian right. taco-less. And then, you know, <laughs> whatever else we can <laughs> find. We'll have a couple of different options. Uh, besides SkaziCon, is there any other type of events coming up? Uh that you would like to mention and get the uh, word out? Nothing in particular. We have a very robust schedule with cultural tourism. Anyone can go to visit CherokeeNation.com mm-hmm. and check out any of the other events that we have. Um, but ScostyCon is definitely the one that uh, my team is working on hard and heavy right now. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned that it, this event has a wide variety of different type of artistry. Is there any others that you're trying to build upon that maybe didn't last year have like film or various other type of artists that you want to start expanding further for people to get involved with? Um, One of the things that is interesting, definitely film. I think that's one of the things that um, 
kind of has the most flash to it and what a lot of the um, the younger mm-hmm. Kids, I would say I'm in my forties, so I don't, I don't know if I, I'm a kid at heart, but <laughs> like, you know, the the kids just coming out of high school and going into college and figuring out what their career path is going to look like, you know, um, I think a lot, mm-hmm. a, a lot of them have interest in that, whether it be behind the scenes production kind of stuff, or um, you know, actually acting, you know, and being being the star of the show. Um, and so we, right. we will have programming surrounding that. We we don't have that completely settled, but we will have programming surrounding that with um, with people in the industry that know that know how to do it. So most of the participants that you had last year, um, given that they had to be uh, a member of a federally recognized tribe, is their artistry and what they bring to the event native driven and inspired? Or is Mostly, it a wide range? I would say it's a wide range. Some is some mm-hmm. is kind of like um some can just be like comic, you know, like native people like comics even if they don't involve natives, you know, like so right. so you'll get like your standard kind of comic uh presence there as well. But then yes, for the most part, I would say ninety-eight percent it's all, you know, n- native inspired, native, you know, it integrated with pop art, fan art kind of stuff. Um Mm-hmm. Uh, game making, we have uh, game makers like tabletop games, role playing games and things like that that um, have either created uh, like fully native themed games or games that integrate some themes from different native cultures and things like that. Um, last year we had uh, Bob Hostler and he's he's uh, does a comic called The Bobcat. That's really big. He was he was one of our um, <laughs> bigger but a lot of people had interest in his booth. Uh, where I'd like, we're, we're hoping, like I said, we haven't confirmed anyone, but I have I have high hopes that he'll be right. back this year as well. Um, a lot of the artists that uh, we had last year will be, I'd say like 90% of the artists that we had last year have already signed up for this year. So, um, and, and, and many more. So you know how that works and the deadline comes in, I'll get, I'll get all the last ones yeah. on the last day. <laughs> but last we're really minute. excited yep. about looking through those hour. And, and getting our roster together and getting to make our announcements and everything. A lot of our bigger announcements will come out um, early August. So, But we'll have oh, okay. some, I believe we'll have some confirmations through the month of July as well that we'll be, get to start announcing. So behind the scenes, what's the creative process in putting this type of event on? For you and your team? Last year, we put together an advisory committee of artists. Uh, it was our team. We worked with Northeastern State University, of course, for like all of the all of the facilities work and all of that kind of thing. Um, but mm-hmm. yeah, we got together with uh, Lee Francis with a tribe called Geek because he'd already done a couple in Digicons. He had those in his pocket. Um, Roy Boney has, you know, like the contacts with Marvel and just some other Cherokee artists uh, that just work in the genre and just talk to them and ask them, you know, what should we have? What do we want to, you know, we had some of our own ideas. We knew what we we wanted to see just personally out of our own interests. And Mm -hmm. uh, the committee really got together. And I think we formed up a really good, you know, a really good uh, set of programming for last year. This year we did something a little different. We kind of, um, stepped out of that and we put out a call for proposals. So we had people either submit, contact us that they wanted to present something specifically. And they kind of give us a little synopsis of what they want to present or even to just like, if you didn't want to, but you're like, I wish someone would come and teach us how to draw comics or some, you know, or give a workshop on A, B or C is something I would like to. So we're going to be taking all of those once we get, you know, past the deadline on that, we're going to be taking all of those and facilitating really as many things as we can this year. But yeah, we wanted to get everyone's input. We're not, you know, the the people organizing don't always have all the ideas. So we love to get those from other people right. and then be able to provide them. When you get various types of uh, creative visionaries together, you know, they come up with a whole sleuth of ideas and visions. Um, how do you kind of direct that to keep that kind of intact to the overall vision of the event? Uh, it really just comes time down to like time and logistics. So it does start really big and it's like, oh, this is 40 things. Mm-hmm. And we want it. We kind of had like a, 
a thing where it was going to be outside and people could do like a, a whole LARPing kind of thing. And we're like, well, this first year, maybe we wait. And we, I hope to grow into that, you know, to where we can have like the outdoor cosplay mm-hmm. um, battles and things, you know, that uh, one thing about it is it's November in, in Oklahoma. So it could be beautiful weather. It could also be two degrees yeah. and snowing. So we're not <laughs> <True>. <laughs> out outdoor in November can be kind of sketchy. So we don't know exactly what how to kind of plan around that. But yeah, we had and then it's yeah, it's really just kind of narrowing down. We we do have a budget, you know, it's not unlimited. Uh so what can we afford? Mm-hmm. What can we realistically do? And then confirming with the people that that really know their subject matter, you know, we we want to make sure that the people that come in and present um, are really going to give good information to our audiences. So given last year was your inaugural event, what was the overall response and feedback that you received after the event? And was there anything really that you were surprised at that like, wow, we really hit the mark or we over exceeded everyone's expectations? We were very, uh, I mean, nothing but compliments. I, a lot of our, we were a little surprised, uh, an area we didn't expect to get compliments on was from all of our uh, vendors. They said that we were honestly one of the most organized uh, events that they'd been to, people that go to cons all the time. And I think that just comes from the experience that we have of running events in general. You know, maybe people that put on some of these mm-hmm. smaller comic cons and stuff, you know, aren't necessarily like seasoned event planners. and being cultural tourism and being, you know, our jobs being what they are, we took a lot of those facets into planning this. And so I believe the vendors really had a really good experience. Um, It's all about hospitality, really. And I think that Cherokee Nation Mm -hmm. goes above and beyond any time for the hospitality of our guests, of our artists, of, you know, anyone we work with. We always want to just, you know, make it the best experience possible. Do you think this helps uh, help uh, provide a driving force in evolving uh, heritage and cultural events for the Cherokee Nation? I think so. Or Native I mean, Americans I think, in general, actually. Yeah. I mean, the more representation, uh, the better, you know, and we are telling our stories. It's not someone else telling our story. I believe tribes across the nation have embraced, exactly. have fully embraced, you know, we don't. We don't need someone to tell people how we're doing. We can show you how we're doing. We can show you what we're doing. Right. We can show you how amazing and resilient and awesome we are. And come celebrate with us. Come celebrate and see and have the best yes. time. But we can but we can do that. Very loud and proud, I guess you could say. Loud and proud. <laughs> that we can every, tell our stories. Yeah, and, every way. Yeah. <laughs> So behind um, the need to provide this type of event, is there any other driving force behind it, the purpose of what, like achieving goals? I think it's just representation and showing people another side of the Native art world, you know. I think for a long time Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's changing and it's changing quickly, especially with social media and all the new technology um, that we have coming out, but, you know, in the past we, we were kind of a little bit, you know, kind of pigeonholed and it's like, okay, everyone, everyone makes a pot or a basket or a weaving and, or, or, you know, or this (laughs) type of painting, not just, you not, can't just be a painter. You have to be this type of painter. And that's just not so that's not true. It doesn't speak to every artist. We have artists, you know, that have all sorts of life experiences and things like that. And while we, you know, Obviously, we treasure those people that keep those keep those, you know, fundamental traditions alive, you know, from time immemorial that that will never be something that we that we stop appreciating and stop and stop, uh, you know, holding dear to us. We're also modern people. We're not gone. We're not extinct Mm -hmm. creatures from the past. You know, We're, (laughs) we're here today. We watch we go to the same theater. We watch all the you know, we see all the same media. And so, you know, embracing that and having our own piece of that is really important to us. And we also love sharing it because that's what it's for. It's for entertainment and it's for fun. Absolutely. I think, you know, because of 
the way things are in social media and just arts in general on a larger landscape, especially for Native Americans, the ebb and flow. You know, you have res dogs, you have fashion, you have the culinary arts that are focused on Native American culinary and, and some of the things I think this makes perfect sense. You know, the time is now. Right. Um, and as we grow, we get on the bandwagon to, you know, while we get, can <laughs> get all those. Pe- yeah. And get all those pieces and creating opportunities for native people. You know, us, cr- us mm-hmm. creating this event is an economic driver for artists and creative people. You know, this is something that they come and, you know, make money at. This is something that they come and they Absolutely. share there and they gain exposure and they, you know, it's it's definitely it's I, I feel like it's a win win all the way around. So. So when you started this last year, was there a sector that you forgot about or it's like, oh, yeah, we should include this or we should add this or people knocking on your door and it's like, well, I do this as a, as a craft or an art and bring them in this year or is it just. Definitely just kind of in smaller, I wouldn't say there's like a big chunk of something that we missed. You know, we, we realized that there are some things we weren't mm-hmm. able to achieve. Like I said, you know, like the outdoor, you know, LARPing and maybe skits and performances and things like that. That is something we would love to like build into future shows. There's going to be a little bit of that this year, you know, um, and one day is, you know, seven hours is, is kind of a short time for everything we want to do. So it's like we've yeah. got seven hours to achieve this, uh, to, <laughs> to achieve <laughs> this goal and, and give everybody like the best seven hours ever. And we're going to do that. Um, but yeah, I think as we grow and as we, I don't see Scosticon going anywhere. So this is, uh, our, our, some of our new merch, it says Scosticon volume two, there's going to be a volume three, four, five, six, hopefully <laughs> volume a hundred. There you go. There you go. Quick impact and just continue to grow. Is there a film component that you want to build upon? I know there's not really a Native American film festival. Um, Is that one of the aspects that you think will come at a later date? Cherokee Nation doesn't necessarily run a Native American film festival. Um, That's something that has been talked about. I don't really know exactly. I couldn't say if it's something that's in our plans or if it's more to maybe support some of the existing festivals. Um, mm. There are, uh, but we definitely are going to showcase film and screen, you know, screen things that have come out in the recent year and talk to people that have worked on recent projects and things like that. So kind of a- anything that's been around or been published. What do you say? I can't think way. of the, what is the yeah. word for debuted? There's a word for it, and I'm just not debuted, fine. premiered, uh, <laughs> premiered. That's it. Anything premiered, that's, yeah. That's premiered this year <laughs> or within the last two years or something like that. We really want to grab a hold of things that you know and bring those people in so that they can so that they can talk to our guests and and our audience about the experiences, how to do it, all of those kind of things. It, um, will you be collaborating with other festivals or other events to grow it bigger and get? Uh, a wider exposure. That's not something we've talked about yet, but you never know in the future. You never know. Yeah. I feel like we and found a pretty good more? date. It's really hard to find a date. Uh, if you're in the events, uh, realm, uh, right. The year is pretty much taken up. So I feel like we got really yeah. lucky. We found a date. It's actually this year. It's on my birthday. It's I think it's always going to be that first oh. weekend in August. So or in I'm sorry, in November. Um, so I, I'll be spending my birthday at Scosticon for at least the next few years. And it's and it's a, it's not a shabby hey. way to spend your birthday. <laughs> it's no, I'm surrounded by all my favorite things. Great way to celebrate. Things. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So who were you surprised at? Um, that participated, that wanted to be involved. Was there any, was there a hard process to get people? Go ahead. It it really wasn't. We put out, um, we just kind of put out some feelers and it was just very kind of uh, community, like word of mouth last year. Uh, I think we got together Mm -hmm. a good group of people that just have that have kind of a large cohort of other artist friends that they work with. And we were like, Hey, we're doing this thing. 
we'd like you also, if you know anyone that you think, and we had some people just kind of like, just based off of our advertising that we put out, just come up some of our, you know, save the date, Scosticon, Indigenous Comic Con, um, the Bobcat, uh, uh, James, I called him Bob earlier because the Bobcat, James Hostler, uh, contact. I honestly, no one on our committee was really aware of him. I think a few people once he like once he reached out to us, uh, were like, "Oh, I have seen that," you know, and it was something we hadn't thought of. And so, yeah, I was I was really surprised at the reach, just the little bit of marketing we did last year got, and this year we've got we've got a we've got a really. Uh, really great roster coming up for people. And it's really neat to see people That's that we didn't think of hear about us and come and come and want to right, right. want to participate in our event. So you don't have the, um, what's it called? The problem of herding wet cats <laughs> that people are no, coming to you and knocking yeah, on your door to be a participant. Was, at the beginning of planning, you know, it was like we each kind of knew a handful of people. Um, I think, one of the benefits is that uh, both Candace and I have a genuine interest in this subject matter. Like we're both fans. Mm -hmm. So we've gravitated towards this kind of thing for a long time. And um, so, yeah. And, and we just happen to be so fortunate to know people that, that make the kind of work that we love. And so it's been, it's been, um, I think a truly like in the, in the Cherokee sense, like a, it's a, been a very like community effort. That's fantastic. Well, I hope many, many, many more years to come. I hope so, so do you too. see your team growing? Has it become? <laughs> do you see your team growing and? Well, this is definitely need, needing the extra hands to. Yeah, this is definitely one of the events we kind of call an all hands event. So Cherokee Nation Cultural Tourism does events all year long, all sorts of different things. Some are small, some mm -hmm. are big. Um, and this is uh, this is definitely one of the ones where where we do have our main um kind of coordinating team uh once the day starts getting closer the all the whole team all of cultural tourism <laughs> it gets brought in to to watch that or we get volunteers from nsu uh center for tribal studies has been really great uh working with us as well it's one of the benefits of actually having it at nsu is we have that we have them there as well um but yeah because there's a lot of there's a lot of jobs to do in the seven hours. Right, right. There's a lot of pre pre preparation behind the scenes that you have to get ready for. Yeah. So for those that are interested, what's the best way then for them to participate, get in contact with you, or for those that want to attend? Uh, Scosticon.com. It's easy as that. S K S. S I'm sorry, S K A S D I C O N dot com. We got our we got our own web address. <laughs> you can find it through Visit Cherokee Nation there as well. Go. But scosticon.com will give you all the updates, all of the um, information about cosplay competition. One thing we did change about our cosplay competition this year is we broke uh, we now have a youth category separate from the adult category. They were all bunched in together. Mm -hmm. We didn't realize that was something that surprised us. We didn't realize the amount of youth that we would have come in and just the the funnest funnest kids and actually one of, one of the youth is who won our grand prize last year so uh we give over forty five hundred dollars in our cos cosplay competition so oh I and like if that. you're in wow. a costume you get in for free. So what? i forgot to mention that it's and five dollars <laughs> students are free if you're in a costume it's free and 12 and under is free what type of costume is it? A wide range or whatever you feel like? Or whatever you feel like. Any fandom. We had someone dressed as Gadget from Rescue Rangers. Uh, we had people from native television shows, movies, uh, comics. We had uh, kind of an amalgam of the two. We had like a native Sailor Moon and a, <laughs> and a, the, I mean it was it was great and I can't wait to just see it grow more. But. I was really surprised at the turnout we had for that. We had a we had a really good uh, turnout for our cosplay competition, and I can only see it growing. Fantastic! I'd love to see that. So, your youth. What's the age brackets for youth that's determined? Uh, we do fifteen and under is what we're calling uh, okay. what we're calling the little kids, <laughs> and the sixteen and over is the big kids. 
<laughs> so the big kids. Okay. Yeah. So what else can you tell us about the event, Cali, or anything else with the cultural tourism that you'd like to promote and share with our audience? I mean, just come out and have a good time. It's, it's really <laughs> one of, I, I don't know, it's one of the coolest events I've ever got to work on. I, and I've been doing events, art shows and things like that for a long time, which I still love. Don't get me wrong. But this one, this one always gets me excited, just makes me smile from ear to ear. And I think... I, I think anyone young and old would come out and find something really mm. fun to, you know, just a great entertaining day. And definitely uh, check if you're coming out of town, check the hotels, motels in the surrounding area of Tahlequah. Uh, to we make do sure have you can on our website, <laughs> there's on our website, there's uh, information for the hotels and things like that. So. Perfect. All right. Well, Callie, I appreciate your time today and being on our show. Uh, anything before we close up uh, that you would want to add and share with us? Not that I can think of right off. No? Okay. Well, for those that are listening, definitely try to attend the event this year. The 2.0, as you said. Volume uh, 2. <laughs> volume Scott's 2 and volume watch it two. grow. and Fantastic. Well, Callie, thank you for uh, participating and being on our show. I appreciate your time and best of luck and congratulations. Thanks, Cray. Thanks for talking to me today. 